So we've just seen that in a very simple Beveridgean framework, uh, the efficient unemployment rate is given by a very simple formula. It's just the geometric average of the unemployment and vacancy rate. So now the question is, um, uh, can we use this formula to um, figure out at any point in time? So obviously we can, you know, we measure u, we measure v, we can use this formula to compute u star, uh, the efficient unemployment rate. But then, can we use this formula to assess whether the um, an economy, say the U.S. economy, is uh, inefficiently tight or inefficiently slack at any point in time? And the answer is yes, actually it's very simple. Um, so <clears throat> what does it mean to have an economy that's inefficiently slack? So the economy is inefficiently slack uh, that's equivalent you know, by definition, it's just like saying that the unemployment rate U is more than the efficient unemployment rate. So U is bigger than U star. So your economy is, you know, is inefficient. You are in an inefficient allocation. And furthermore, it's slack because you have too much unemployment. Um, so it means that U is bigger than U star. But this is just the same as saying that U is bigger than square root of uv. And of course, dividing both sides by square root of uv is the same as saying that square root of u is bigger than square root of v. And of course, square root is a strictly increasing function, so it's the same as saying that u is bigger than v. Um, so here we have a very simple criteria for inefficiency. Your labor, your economy is inefficiently slack if the unemployment rate is strictly greater than the vacancy rate. So this is very simple. And then conversely, of course, uh, because when your economy is not inefficiently slack, it's, uh, you know, you can do exactly the same. So you can say that an economy is inefficiently tight So what does that mean? It means that you, the unemployment rate is less than u star. And of course, following exactly the same logic, it means that you can rewrite it as u being less than v. So that's another, that's a criterion for an economy that's too tight is where your unemployment rate is less than the vacancy rate. So that's very simple. And then can you find another criterion then of course for efficiency, well, which is neither too tight, neither too slack. Well, you can see from this, obviously, your economy, oops, economy is efficient. So the economy is operating efficiently. It's this occurs when uh, u, the unemployment rate, is equal to u star. But of course, that's equivalent to u is equal to v, following the same logic that we've just done. So we have a very simple criterion. You look at the unemployment rate, the vacancy rate. If they are equal, your economy is efficient. If the unemployment rate is above the vacancy rate, your economy is too slack. If your unemployment rate is below your vacancy rate, then your economy is too tight. So that's really super simple. Uh, what's interesting is that there's actually a very long history uh, in economics of this idea that by comparing the unemployment rate to the vacancy rate, you can learn about whether um, your labor market operates efficiently or not. Um, so, for instance, if you go back all the way to um, the Beveridge report that Beveridge wrote in 1944, uh, in which you know you have the first mention of uh, I guess the Beveridge curve. Of course, at the time it wasn't called like this, and furthermore, Beveridge didn't plot the Beveridge curve, but he noted that. He looked at unemployment rates, vacancy rates, and he showed, you know, how these things were moving in opposite directions. So he had noticed that there was 
Well, first, you notice that looking at vacancies is important to understand the health of the labor market. Second, you notice that unemployment and vacancies are systematically move in opposite direction. And so the idea of the beverage curve came in that 1944 report. Uh, I guess so the key things that appear there is that UMV move in opposite direction. But furthermore, another thing that you find in the in the beverage report that beverage says that he thought that the appropriate level of unemployment uh, corresponding to what you can call full employment uh, is when the unemployment rate is close to the vacancy rate, when you have as many unemployed as vacant jobs. And of course, this wasn't based on the matching model. You know, these things were not invented. The notion of matching functions didn't exist. But you just saw that intuitively it kind of makes sense. And I guess the logic was that, well, if have enough, enough vacancies to get all the unemployed, then the economy kind of works properly. And then, you know, it may take a bit of time for unemployed to find a job, but you have enough jobs that are available. So that was the intuition at the time. Now here, we have a different logic. Uh, you know, we think that, un, you know, we think that both unemployed and vacancies that lead to some waste. And both are related by a beverage curve that's an hyperbola. And so when you want to minimize waste, you get to that. But it's interesting that by taking these two different approaches, you still get the same result that what you want is to have as many vacancies as unemployed to have an appropriate, efficient labor market. Um, so we had a discussion of full employment, which full employment we can interpret as uh, basically the same as efficient. Unemployment, discussion of full employment being reached when uh, U is approximately equal to it. So that's kind of interesting. This is something that has a very uh, that has a very old uh, very old legacy in economics. Um, another thing we can say is that we can uh, just to wrap up that we can reformulate all of these results in terms of uh, market tightness, and you get an maybe even more compact representation of the result. <clears throat> so express results in terms of market tightness. Theta is equal to V divided by U. Well, that's very easy. So we said that the labor market is going to be efficient when uh, U is equal to V. And so what does that mean for the uh, what does that mean for the labor market tightness? Well, the labor market is efficient when uh, the labor market tightness is equal to one because we said we have efficiency once. Uh, you have as many vacancies as unemployed workers. So your labor market is efficient when uh, the tightness is one. So the efficient tightness is theta star is equal to one. So that's really easy to remember. So tightness of one is efficient. It's good to know. Then we, from this, the labor, the labor market, the economy, Is inefficiently slack. So we said the economy was inefficiently slack when you had more unemployed workers and vacancies. And so that translates with the tightness being less than one. And your economy is inefficiently tight when we said the number of vacancies was um, above the number of job seekers. And so that's theta strictly uh, bigger than one. So you get this really simple uh, result in terms of tightness. Okay, so uh, you can just compute the tightness and you can just track it as bigger than one, your economy is too tight. If it's lower than one, your economy is too slack. If it's just one, your economy is efficient. Um, and then based on that, then the, uh, you know, the unemployment rate will be given by whatever the beverage curve uh, is. Uh, so very simple result in terms of tightness. <clears throat> Um, and so that, you know, that's another way uh, of representing uh, efficiency. You can just track tightness and see whether it's uh, in the region above one or in the region below one. 